Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How To Neil Gavin. I didn't really want to do another book haul video just yet, but when I did my big huge birthday book unboxing video, there were a few gifts that I still got from people after I did that unboxing video. So I really wanted to give credit where credit was due and say a huge thank you to everybody else who sent me something after my birthday. And a lot of these were gifted actually. I think I only bought about 10 that's on this list and there's about 59 books here. Some of these didn't come with gift notes, so I feel like this is the best way of me finding out who gifted me something. So if I say something came without a gift note and you sent me that book, I didn't ignore you. I'm so sorry that I didn't get to say thank you. It just didn't come with a gift note. So if you did send it, please let me know and I will give you the biggest thank you ever. I am moving house and it will be very, very soon. It should probably happen within the next week. Probably should have done the opposite and did a big unhaul before I moved. But let's just make the move a little bit harder, you know. Let's just create a little bit more chaos with the move. It's what I prefer. So I will section this video into books that were gifted to me from publishers and authors and then I'll go into the middle grade books that I got gifted slash bought, the YA books I got gifted slash bought and the adult books I got gifted slash bought. So that's the kind of rundown of this video. So let's start it off then with the books that were gifted from publishers and authors. I'm gonna start off with one that I had not heard anything about. A lot of the stuff that I do get is unsolicited so don't think that I'm just you know requesting things that I'd never heard of before just to have them. I don't do that I promise. I only request things I'm really super keen about. But you guys might have heard of this one, but it is Gifting by Leila Suzanne. It comes out in September 2021. This was sent by Push Compress, so thank you so much for sending me this. It looks pretty good. It is a YA and I think dystopian too. So it says a girl takes on an oppressive system in this electrifying dystopian teen adventure set in a post-apocalyptic world sapped of natural resources. Apparently an event called the Darkening happened which stripped the earth of its natural resources and now people are clamoring to get what is left. But it's such a surprise to get and I do think I might end up enjoying this. So yeah, this was the first book that I got gifted. Then Puffin sent me Jazz Santos vs. The World by Priscilla Mante and I have seen this book around before. In fact, I follow the author on Twitter. So I did want to try and get this one anyway. So thank you so much. This is a finished copy. So this one follows Jasmina or Jazz for short and she really wants to get her mum back. So I think she has this great plan to join this epic football team and somehow win her mum back that way. I don't know how the dots are connected there. It doesn't really tell you on the back, which is fine because I, I love knowing less when I go into a book. It's very apt right now as well with England having been in Germany very recently at the Euros. I mean, it's coming home, so why not read a football book in the meantime? <laughs> Next up, the lovely Walker book sent me Maria's Island by Victoria Hislop, illustrated by Gil Smith. And again, I had no idea this was coming, but it is a very beautiful middle grade book. It's got so many incredible illustrations in. It's actually inspired by the best selling novel The Island but retold as a story for children and Victoria Hislop I think is an adult writer and The Island might be one of her most famous books I think. This one tells of Maria's moving tale of how her fate was bound to the Cretan island of Spinalonga and it's full of friendship, family, courage, hope and you know what I don't know why but I just I think this is going to give me some great summer vibes. It just looks beautiful and perfect for the summer so thank you so much Walker for sending me this. Faber and Faber sent to me The Week at World's End by Emma Carroll. Emma Carroll is a fantastic middle grade writer who writes a lot of historical fiction and this one is set I think during the Cuban Missile Crisis and there is this boy who finds this runaway girl in his shed and he ends up becoming unsettled by her. That's all I pretty much know about it really. I did just do a 32 middle grade books you should be excited about video where I mentioned this and I believe it was September when this one comes out. September 2nd I think it was. Harper Collins sent to me the new edition of Divergent. It has this opening up here, well a brand new cover, an opening there which says we believe in ordinary acts of bravery in the courage that drives one person to stand up for another. And this is by Veronica Roth and obviously the Divergent series was that big craze after the Hunger Games and I only ever read the first book, I didn't read the second or third book. Maybe one day I will finish off the series or at least start back with this one. So it's good timing. The thing is though, it's huge. It's a lot bigger than the version I have. It's like 500 pages. But there are extras on the back as well to go through each of the sectors. What were they called again? Factions. Yeah, each of the factions. It tells you all about the history and stuff on the back. So that's pretty cool. I do kind of like the cover, but I mean, 
I mean, thank you so much, Hopper, for sending a finished copy of it. Maybe I will go back to reading this one day. The Wonderful Orion sent me Julia and the Shark by Kiri Mobile Hargrave with illustrations by Tom DeFreston. Read this one recently and loved it. It's a genuine five star read. It I can't really show you actually the illustrations. It is a proof copy, whereas Maria's Island is out now, so I can show you the insides of that. But this one, it's not out yet. It comes out on September 2nd. Honestly, the illustrations and the text together is so beautiful. It tells this beautiful story of Julia who accompanies her parents to this lighthouse and her mum is trying to find this rare shark. It goes into like depression and mental health and honestly the illustrations just uh, take the story to the next level. I mean, Kieran Millwood Hargrave is a fantastic writer as it is. It just all comes together so beautifully. So I highly recommend this one. So glad I read it when I did. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I also got sent Noah's Gold by Frank Cottrell Boyce with illustrations by Stephen Lenton. It came out in May. So this one follows Noah who ends up stowing away on his sister's geography trip on this island but then he ends up getting marooned on that island with five other kids with no other way of getting off this island. They don't have internet, they don't have anything that's really going to help them. So this is a middle grade and it sounds like it's very adventurous because apparently they find a treasure map as well. So I'm, I'm here for that adventure. I love adventures like that. Thank you so much to Macmillan for sending me a copy of this. Puffin kindly sent me a final copy of Secrets of the Stars by Maria Kushnier and this is a sequel to The Ship of Shadows. I adore this one. I read it recently, gave it five stars. It's a fantastic sequel to The Ship of Shadows, which follows an all-female crew on the legendary Ship of Shadows, which is this magical ship. And Alea is our main character. She ends up joining them to find this map that has been divided into pieces, and when all of these pieces get put together, they will show the map. So they are on this adventure. This book follows on with that storyline, and it's just, it's a great series. So good and perfect for fans of Pirates of the Caribbean. I have an interview with this author very, very soon, so I will leave a link to that in the description description box if you want to check it out. It will be spoiler free so even if you haven't read The Ship of Shadows you will still be able to join in. Speaking of author interviews, I am interviewing Vashti Hardy, the author of Crawfall. This one was sent to me by Scholastic and I read it as soon as it came because I was so excited. I think the interview will have already happened by the time I put this video up. I will leave a link to the interview down in the description box. I'm sure it went great. So this one follows Orin who lives on Ironhold and it's kind of a blend between nature and technology. Orin has a best friend called Cody who is a fixie which is like this little robot and one day he finds out that the island is dying. He ends up going on this accidental adventure, things happen, things get sent to motion, and he ends up finding another island, and hopefully finds the answers to saving his own. It's a great adventure, and I adored it so much. I gave it five stars, and this came out at the start of July, so thank you so much for sending me a finished copy. It's so shiny, like all the water and stuff there, it's really reflective, and it's just beautiful. Walker kindly sent me a final copy of Twitch by M.G. Leonard, and this one follows a young bird watcher who, I mean, he loves watching birds, he's just a little kid, but he ends up seeing a crime happening. So he is the only person who witnesses it, I think. So then he ends up having to take his bird watching skills and cracking this case, I believe. At least that's what I think this is about. So yeah, a convicted robber has escaped and he has to try and find the missing loot. So yeah, it looks really good. I love M.G. Leonard and her writing style. I love the Adventures on Train series so, so much. And this is her next kind of solo project after the Beetle Boy series. So I'm excited to dive into it. I did an interview with Abby Alphenston, the author of the Unmarked Chronicles series, and she sent me a final copy of the last book in that series, which is The Crackle Dawn Dragon, which came out at the start of June. And this one is, yes, the third and final book in the Unmarked Chronicles series. It is part of this great adventure where there is a kingdom in the sky and it is being terrorised by this evil harpy called Morg. And each book in the series has followed different characters, and this one follows a different character called Zebedee Bolt. I'm so excited to read this because I loved Rumble Star and Jungle Drop so, so much. And I just know that this one will probably be the best one yet. I got this after the interview. Like, it wasn't out when we did the interview. So she ended up sending me a copy of it. And she also signed it for me as well. And gave me this little horse card with a little note as well. And honestly, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Abby, for sending me this. Sophie Anderson, the absolute babe, who is the author of The House with Chicken Legs and so much more, sent me a Japanese version of The House with Chicken Legs. How gorgeous is this cover? Like, look at that. Like, honestly, like, the Japanese cover style and artwork of a lot of British middle grade books are so gorgeous. Let's take a look under the dust jacket because it does not stop here. Wow. Wow. How incredible is this? That is honestly a, 
oh my god, like I actually haven't seen it like this before. That is just honestly stunning. Absolutely obsessed. So yeah, she had some spare and decided to send me one because I'm the biggest fan and I want to add to my Sophie Anderson collection. Oh god, I love it. And if you haven't read The House of Chicken Legs yet, it follows Marinka who lives with Baba Yaga, who is her grandmother, and she helps to cross spirits over. And that's all I'll pretty much say about it. I do talk about Sophie Anderson's books a lot on my channel and I rave about them all the time. But I adore this book. I adore Sophie Anderson as a person. Thank you so much for sending me the Japanese version of The House of Chicken Legs. The most recent one I actually got, I mean, I do have more, but the most recent one I got is The Chime Seekers by Ross Montgomery. Ross Montgomery is the author of The Midnight Guardians, which I adored with my whole heart last year. But it says here, step into a world of fairy tricks and hidden danger. I absolutely love the final cover as well. I will put it up here. But at uh, this one, it says it is about an evil fairy that steals Yanni's baby sister and swaps her for a changeling. Yanni is swept into a dangerous phase against time to get her back. So it sounds fantastic. Honestly, Ross Montgomery's writing style is incredible. It's so whimsical and humorous at the same time. Honestly, if it's anything like The Midnight Guardians, I just know I'm gonna love it. I'm so excited to read this one. It comes out in November, so I have a bit of time to read it. I just wanna read it now. <laughs> I've got TBRs to get through first, but I just wanna read it now. So thank you so much, Walker, for sending me this. Oh, I love you guys so much. A nice surprise as well that I got from Push Compress was The False Rose by Jacob Wagelius. This one is the, I think, the sequel to The Murderer's Ape. I haven't read The Murderer's Ape yet, but I do own it. So this is the first one, which is The Murderer's Ape. It follows Sally Jones, who is an extraordinary gorilla and a brilliant ship's engineer, who sails the high seas on the Hudson Queen with her loyal friend, the Chief. So I kind of think this is like an adventure on the seas. I don't know, like, the look of it looks a little bit steampunkish. I have no idea where the sequel goes from there. It is translated by Peter Graves. I think it's going to be fantastic. I will probably read both of them together. So thank you so much, Pushkin, for sending me a copy of this. Next up, I have Adam 2 by Alistair Chisholm. And this one is a highly anticipated book. It comes out at the start of August. And Alistair Chisholm is the author of Orion Lost, which I loved. It's one of my favourite middle grade sci-fi books of all time. In fact, it is my favourite sci-fi middle grade book of all time. This isn't a sequel to Orion Lost. It's just by the same author. So that's why I'm excited. This one follows a robot called Adam 2 who has been asleep for 200 years. And he ends up getting reawakened by a couple of kids who find him in an abandoned building. Now, the world has been ravaged by a war between human civilization and, I think, artificial intelligence. So it'll be really interesting to see what Alistair does with that story. I've heard there's a lot of twists and turns. So, oh God, I'm just so excited. Thank you so much, Naughty Crow, for sending me this book. Another recent one was from Puffin, and it's The Ice Whisperers by Helenka Stakira. And this one comes out in October. It looks very Frozen-like because it also says the story of two sisters born 40,000 years apart, which, I mean, the 40,000 years apart is not frozen like. It says that when Bella's mother dies, she is summoned to the deepest part of Siberia to stay with an uncle she's never met. She ends up finding a doorway that opens to an icy land, frozen in time and full of legends come to life. So I guess that's where she finds her long lost sister 40,000 years in the past. It just sounds so good. I just absolutely love the amount of effort that went into this proof copy. It's just so beautiful. When it says it's also illustrated by Marco Guadalupe. So thank you so much Puffin for sending me it. I got The Book of Stolen Dreams by David Farr. I got this in a gorgeous package, a gorgeous box. Here it is. This is the box it came in and it also had like different goodies in it and a postcard and an invitation to an event. So that's really cool. But this is number 14 of 35 signed by the author and this comes out at the end of September. It follows two kids who are given this stolen book and they have to protect it with their lives from the villainous Charles Malstein. Charles Malstein. They have to protect it from Charles Malstein and they also need to find the missing last page. Sounds like a fantastic adventure story, fantastic middle grade, excited to read it. Like I'm going to say about every single book on this list. So I'll try and not say that anymore. But yeah, thank you so much to Usborn for sending me this book. Onto the subscription boxes then, I got The Last Shadow Warrior by Sam Subbity in my Alcray Junior box for June. This one follows 12 year old Abby who I think is a viking and she ends up having to hunt monsters called the Grendels. Her home is attacked and she ends up having to try and find refuge at a school and I think it's just going to be filled with magic. <laughs> Never heard of it before I opened it in Alcray Junior so this one definitely flew under the radar for me. So I'm excited I got an undiscovered book in my Alcray Junior box. Finally, in Fairy Loot, I got Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart, and this is the gorgeous sprayed edges or stenciled edges under the dust jacket as well. 
is just stunning too. It's just the whole package, fairy loot just went all out. This one follows Aria and Jasmine and they've been kind of brought up as enemies because I think it's Jasmine's mum who kind of overthrew the royalty and she is a self-proclaimed Diane. And Aria wants her family's thrown back and she joins up with Jasmine, I think, even though they're supposed to be enemies, to stop Jasmine's mother. It sounds like a fantastic fantasy. I need to read it yesterday. So now we're on to the middle grades. I want to start off with all the ones that were gifted and I think I only bought four this past month and a half. So let's get into it. The Incredible Effie sent me Second Dad's Summer by Benjamin Class. I had never heard of this book before. It wasn't even on my wish list, which is incredible because a few people sent me things that weren't even on my wish list and I was like, what? How can you do that? But apparently people can do that. It is a middle grade. It's got some illustrations in there. Well, actually quite a lot of illustrations in there. This one follows Jeremiah, whose dad is gay and he has a boyfriend and I think he has to stay with his dad for the summer and apparently it's going to be a really long summer. I don't know. I think he just has a bond with his dad and yeah, it sounds really good. So I'm excited to give this one a shot. So thank you so much for the recommendation, Effie. More queer middle grade, yes. Effie also sent me The Foundling and Other Tales of Gridian by Lloyd Alexander. This is a short story kind of collection from the world of The Chronicles of Pridian, which was the book series that inspired The Black Cauldron, which is an underrated Disney animated classic, if you ask me. I would love to read the books and watch the movie and compare. So yeah, it's a companion book filled with short stories about the history of the magical land of... Oh, it's a Prydain. It might be Prydain. I might have been saying that wrong. I'll know better when I get to it. <laughs> My Love Tracy sent me The Night Silver Promise by Annalise Avery. I've already read this one and really enjoyed it. This one is set in a world where people have these track of stars on their wrist and it tells them their destiny. Now, Pace our main protagonist doesn't have a track of stars on her wrist but when she does get one it's shortened which indicates that she has a short life ahead of her. It's a very great adventure series. I love the world building in this too. There are dragon touched people but thank you Tracy for sending me a finished copy of this. I read a proof copy a few months back and it was so good so yeah thank you so much Tracy. Victoria sent me Lenny's Book of Everything by Karen Foxley. Now somebody recommended this to me. I think it might have been in store I think when I was at work. It's very hard to sum up this book so I'm just going to read some of the back but it follows Lenny Spink who is the sister of a giant. Her little brother Davy won't stop growing and at seven is as tall as a man. They end up getting a monthly installment of Burrell's Builded at Home Encyclopedia set and in the book's pages there are amazing mysterious entries to give them a way to dream of escape. So Lenny vows to become a beetle expert while Davy decides to run away to Canada and build a log cabin. But as Davy's disease progresses the sibling's richly imagined world becomes harder to cling to in this deeply moving and original novel about grief, family and wonder. However recommended to me said it was a very moving book. So I think that is what piqued my interest because I have seen this book around before and it didn't really draw me in. But now that I know more about it, I thought, you know what, that would be amazing. So thank you so much, Victoria, for sending me this. I really appreciate it. Victoria also sent me Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand. And this was the Touch of Whimsy Book Club book for July, I think it was, June, July. But the book club has now disbanded. But I still want to read this book so, so much. This one follows Finley Hart and her parents are having problems she sent to her grandparents' house for the summer and she's never met her grandparents before. There is the Everwood, which is a forest kingdom that exists in the pages of her notebook. And then she discovers an endless forest behind her grandparents' house and realises the Everwood is real and it's in trouble. So it sounds like it's that blend of what's real and the imagined, the fantastical. The Touch of Whimsy Book Club always picked great books for their book club picks. So I'm sure this one is also going to be fantastic. Thank you again, Victoria, for sending me those books. The Amazing Laura sent me the list of things that will not change by Rebecca Stead, which is an LGBTQ plus middle grade novel which follows a young girl whose parents have split up and her dad has come out as gay. So she makes a list of things that won't change due to the, well, the change of her family dynamic because at the end of the day, love is love and the family will always be the same. So it's a really cute, really easy to read middle grade and I would definitely recommend it. So thank you, Laura, for sending me this copy. I read it as soon as it came pretty much and I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Somebody sent me Arusha and the City of Gold by Roshni Chok. I don't know who sent it because it didn't come with a gift note. But this is book four out of five in the Pandava Quintet series, which follows Aru and she accidentally ends up awakening a sleeper demon, which brings trouble to the world. It weaves in Hindu mythology and Aru has to save the world. And it's just a great series. I really enjoy it. I did an interview with Roshni Chokshi for this book at the start of April. It was so fantastic. So I'm still really excited to read this book. I mean, this cover is very yellow. <laughs> the cover is very yellow. And thank you to whoever sent me this. If you've sent it, please let me know in the description box. I would love to give you a big huge thank you. My Love G from Book Rose sent me Zero G, the first book in the Zero Chronicles by Dan Wells. It is an apt book for G to send considering it has 
Jay's name in the title. This one has that kind of self-published feel to it, which honestly I don't mind at all. But this one follows Zero, who is just one of 20,000 people who is on their way to a new planet. The journey is a century long, but fortunately everybody is in stasis, apart from our main character, who is Zero. It sounds like, what's that film called with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence? Passengers? It sounds like that, but for kids. Because yeah, his is the only part who is malfunctioned, and it wakes him up a hundred years early. Thank you so much, Jay, for sending me this. I've been really desperate for more middle grade sci-fi, and this one looks like it could be a fantastic fantastic one to add to my collection. The wonderful Nicole sent me The Nightmare Thief by Nicole L'Esperance and I'm just looking at the cover it just screams magic. This one follows Marin who works in her family's dream shop where they can handcraft any dream imaginable. The shop only has one rule and that is to not give dreams to people without their consent. Marin our protagonist has no problem with that until her sister Hallie has an accident that leaves her in a coma and Marin is certain that she can cure her sister by giving her a few well chosen dreams. So I feel like this is gonna open up some kind of trouble for our main characters and it just sounds really good and such a magical adventure. So thank you so much Nicole for sending me this one. Nicole also sent me Race of the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I've been so excited to read this book. It's a Rick Ryden Presents book and also by the same author as Black Sun. Black Sun is an adult book but this one is Rebecca's middle grade book. This one follows Nazoni who can see through disguises and he like monsters disguises who are dressed as people. And one day Nazoni's dad goes missing and she ends up having to try and find him. Nazoni and her friends end up having to to try and reach the House of the Sun and it just sounds so good. I love Rick Ryden Presents books so so much and it sounds like another fun one in that line. The wonderful Lisa sent me Black Brother Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. This one follows Dante who was framed at school for something that he didn't do and he ends up getting suspended. He ends up trying to find a place where he belongs and ends up discovering a passion for fencing. He ends up having to fence against the person who framed him and I don't know what else happens after that one. I'm pretty positive this is a middle grade. I might be wrong but I'm pretty positive this is a middle grade. But yeah, I'm excited to dive into this one, so thank you so much, Lisa, for sending me it. Thank you so much to Marissa for sending me The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury and illustrations by Grace Grimley. That's such a great illustrator name for an atmospheric spooky middle grade, isn't it? Grace Grimley? Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah, this one follows a shadowy figure who takes eight trick-or-treaters on an unforgettable journey to find their missing friend, Pip. They travel through space and time, they travel to the tombs of ancient Egypt, the gargoyles of Notre Dame, and even to Mexico on the Day of the Dead. It sounds like a fantastic adventure on Halloween night with all the Halloween spooky fall vibes. I'm reading this for Summerween and I cannot wait. Thank you to whoever sent me these next two books. They came together but without a gift note. The first one is Horse Boy by Tanya Landman and I saw this one around and I was really interested in reading it. I think this one is set way back in time about a boy who discovers a horse and like horses are like a new thing at this point. But Oak does get separated from his clan and this horse is his only company. And whoever sent me this, thank honestly thank you. Also sent me The Famous Five, Five on a Treasure Island by Enid Blyton. And this wasn't on my wish list. I don't think I was ever going to read an Enid Blyton book, just with all of the conversations around Enid Blyton and her works. But thank you so much for sending me this one. I do really appreciate any gifts that you guys send. Thank you so much to whoever sent me these two. I do appreciate it. A huge thank you to Essie for sending me Twilight Hauntings by Angie Sage, which is the Enchanter's Child book one. I adore this cover. In fact, it was Danny who showed me this cover and I was like, oh my god, that is beautiful. So this one follows Alex, who has a set of enchanted cards. However, in his city, in his town, enchanted cards are illegal. Apparently, there are lurking deadly hauntings that seek out those who practice magic, enchanters, and their children. But why do the hauntings haunt Alex? Hmm, that is the question. So it looks really good. I mean, start of a, hopefully, a great new series. But yeah, thank you so much, Esty, for sending me this book. This next one also didn't come with a gift note, so thank you whoever sent me this. But it is My Life is an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibi Zaboy. And this one, I think, is another middle grade sci-fi book. And as me and Jade from J.D. Ray Reads were trying to get more middle grade sci-fi recommendations for middle grade monthly and we came across this one. So this one is set in 1984 and it follows Ebony Grace who flies from Alabama to Harlem where she'll stay with her father. Apparently Ebony Grace is obsessed with all things science fiction and that's all I know about it in fact. The back of the book doesn't really have much of a synopsis or anything. Thank you so much whoever sent me it. Please let me know in the comments below if you were the one who sent me it. Again I want to give you a big huge thank you. Big hugs and thanks to Oscar for sending me Hurricane Child by Case and Calendar. This has been a highly anticipated a book of mine. I absolutely loved King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. This one follows Caroline who was born during hurricane season which means that she is unlucky. Caroline doesn't really have any friends but a new girl called Calendar comes to the island and becomes friends with Caroline. Caroline's mother had disappeared beforehand and Caroline really wants to know why. I do believe this has some LGBTQ plus themes so I'm so excited to read it. Big thanks to Caden for sending me the finished copy of A Glass House of Stars by Shirley Moore. I got this as a proof and was so excited to read it. This one follows Mixing Lim who immigrates with her family 
family to new land. They live in this ever-changing house and everything is pretty much scary for Meek Sun Lim and her family. Things happen, Meek Sun's life gets turned upside down, there is this magical glass house. It is also told in second person which is so different to what a lot of middle grade books are like. In fact, I can't even name another middle grade book that is told in second person. And this also has French flaps which is cool. I love me a French flap. Big, big thanks to Eileen for sending me The Tenth Kingdom by Catherine Wesley. And this one I think is a novelization of the TV show or the big epic miniseries that aired Gosh, it must have been 21 years ago now. And I loved that TV show. It was so hilarious, so amazing. I have it on Blu-ray and can't remember the last time I watched it, but it is a really enchanting, silly, funny, magical series. And I do believe this might be the novelization. I don't think this inspired the show. I believe the show came first. I, I don't even know how to begin to explain the series, but there were, you know, nursery rhyme characters and fairy tale characters in it. And we did follow Virginia, who is a New York waitress and finds herself in the fantasy world of the Nine Kingdoms, where she must save a prince from the clutches of his evil stepmother and restore him to the throne. I remember there was Wolf, who is a man, but he turns into a wolf. He was just so great in the TV show. I just loved watching him. So thank you so much, Eileen, for sending me this book. So the four books that I actually bought myself were Children in the Quicksands by Edward Trowery. And this one, again, also has French flaps. I love the French flaps. This one follows Simi, who was sent to live with her long lost grandmother in a remote Nigerian village. No TV, no internet, no phone, not a single human sound can be heard at night, just the noise of birds and animals in the dark forest. Her grandmother makes herbal medicines for the villagers, but she won't talk to Simi about their family's past. Something bad must have happened. To find out, Simi goes exploring. Caught in the sinking red quicksand of a forbidden lake, her extraordinary journey begins. It sounds so fantastic. Thank you, me, for getting me this book. <laughs> it was signed, and I really wanted it signed, so I had to get it. It. it was only a couple of copies. I'm selfish. I also had to pick up a final copy of Rainbow Grey by Laura Ellen Anderson with the gorgeous rainbow sprayed edge that you can get from Waterstones, although a lot of Waterstones are now sold out, you can't get it online. So you might find some final copies in store if you are lucky. I love this book so, so much, and I have a reading vlog for it. So this one follows Ray Gray, who lives in the Weatherlands, and everybody has weather magic. Apart from some people, including Ray, and Ray ends up going on this forbidden expedition to Earth and discovers rainbow magic and is imbued with rainbow magic and gets transformed into Rainbow Gray. It's a warm hug of a book, and I'd recommend it wholeheartedly. So the next two books I bought myself for a specific reason, reason and that is because I'm doing a vlog series where I look at Disney movies and the original source material and how well Disney adapted them. So I'm going to start off with the golden age of Disney which includes Snow White to Dumbo and there are three books in that era but I've got two of them here and one of them is The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi and everybody knows this story I'm sure. This is about a wooden puppet called Pinocchio who dreams of being a real boy. Then I also have Bambi A Life of the Woods by Felix Salton. Bambi is a young fawn and if you've seen the movie you know it's rather sad. I'm imagining this book will also make me cry. So I got these two for that purpose. Moving on to the young adult books then. There's only three here. Two of them were sent to me. One of them I bought. The first one was from Julia and that is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Naimi. I absolutely adore this cover. I saw it recommended on someone's channel. I forget who it was now. This one follows Lila who was sent to England to spend three weeks with family friends in Winchester to relax and reset. Lila ends up being Orion who is a tea shop clerk with troubles of his own and he is determined to help Lila out of her funk and appoints himself as a personal tour guide. <laughs> that just sounds like so good. Thank you so much Julia for sending me this book. A huge thank you to Michelle from Books Michelle for sending me this big beast and that is Avatar The Last Airbender The Promise. This is a graphic series that's based on the TV show. It's huge. I really want to read the Avatar books in a reading vlog at some point especially since I've been watching the series for the very first time and I'm still currently on season two I think. I've been watching it for ages but I am enjoying it. I just haven't had the time. I didn't realise how big it would be. Thank you so much Michelle for sending me this. I can't wait to read more graphic novels. Could probably do some ASMR with this. And the only YA book I bought myself was Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is another Case and Calendar book actually because I have another one, Hurricane Child, that I mentioned earlier. It does have this beautiful sprayed edge as well. It's just on the one side which it, it's perfect actually. It's perfect just like that. So this one follows Felix who has never been in love and honestly I relate to that. Desperately wants to know what it's like and why it seems so easy for everyone but him to find someone. What's worse is that even though he is 
part of his identity, Felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalization too many, black, queer, and transgender. An anonymous student sends him transphobic messages after publicly posting Felix's dead name alongside images of him before he transitioned. It sounds like a really important young adult book, and I adored Case and Calendar's writing style in King and the Dragonflies, so I just know I'm going to love this one and Hurricane Child. So thank you, me, again, for gifting me this book. <laughs> On to the adult books then, and I actually have way more adult books than young adult books, so don't worry, it's not going to be a brief, well, I mean, you probably are worried because this video is getting long now. This isn't going to be a brief section like the young adult section, so let's get into it. <laughs> My bae Cody from Cody's Book Corner sent me Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, which I will show you under the dust jacket. There's nothing under it. This one follows the princess of Crete and daughters of the fearsome King Minos, Ariadne and her sister Phaedra grow up carrying the terrible bellows of the Minotaur from the labyrinth beneath the palace. The Minotaur demands blood every year. Also, I know I'm going to be pronouncing a lot of this wrong, so if you are a Greek mythology lover, I apologise. When Theseus, prince of Athens, arrives in Crete as a sacrifice of the beast, Ariadne falls in love with him. But helping Theseus defeat the monster means betraying her family, and Ariadne knows that in a world ruled by mercurial gods, drawing their attention can cost you everything. I've been really excited to read it for a while now. I've seen it on a few people's channels. Beautiful for one, and I do love me a Greek retelling. So thank you so much, Cody. But Cody also sent me Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marino Garcia, which I read earlier this year. I was going to say last year. It feels like it's been last year. But only earlier this year, I read Mexican Gothic and really enjoyed it. This one follows a glamorous socialite who goes to this really strange manor where her cousin begs for her help. Strange things happen. This is a fantastically told gothic tale. So spooky. So thank you Cody for sending me this. I only listened to the audiobook so I didn't actually have a copy. So it's great to have a copy of this on hand because I really did enjoy it. Thank you so much. I love you Cody. A huge thank you to Sharon for sending me this beautiful Barnes and Noble edition of Jules Verne's four novels which includes Five Weeks in a Balloon, A Journey to the Center of the Earth, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and Around the World in 80 Days. I'm really excited to read the latter three. I've never heard of Five Weeks in a Balloon. Classic writer. I'm sure you've seen movies based on these books before. I know I have, and I've enjoyed some of them, but I haven't watched them in a long time. So they might not hold up today, but you know what? I really wanted to read these books. Honestly, the Barnes & Noble editions of books are just absolutely stunning. Because speaking of Barnes & Noble books, somebody, and I don't know who, sent me The Classic Tales of Horror, which is, you know, an anthology of lots of different horror tales, but I don't know who sent me this book because it didn't come with a gift note, so thank you to whoever sent me this. So yeah, not too much to say about this one, but it does have tales by Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, Washington Irving, Arthur Conan Doyle, Nathaniel Hawthorne, H.P. Lovecraft, blah 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 blah. Lots and lots of short stories in this. So yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into some of these, if not all of them actually. Could you imagine me trying to read all of this though? Whew, this will have to go in the TBR bag of dread, and then I have to read all of it at once. <gasps> Maybe for Halloween. Oh my god, that would be so fun. <laughs> Huge thank you to Darcy for sending me Malice by Heather Walter. And this one I think is an LGBTQ plus sleep and beauty read telling and it says that Princess Aurora, the last heir to the throne, the future queen her realm needs, one who isn't bothered that I am the dark race, a bold and feared for the mysterious dark magic that runs in my veins. Aurora says I shall be proud of my gifts, that she cares for me, even though it was the power like mine that was responsible for her curse. I'm so interested and so excited to read it. So many great reviews that I've seen on this online. Thank you so much, Darcy, for sending me it. Another huge thank you to Louise for sending me Tribesman by Adam Caesar. Adam Caesar is the author of Clown in a Cornfield, which I adored. I thought it was so fantastic. And this one is more of a, I guess, an adult horror because Clown in a Cornfield is a young adult. But this one says, 30 years ago, a cynical sleazeball director took a tiny cast and crew to a desolate island. His goal is to exploit the local tribes spray some guts around, cashing on the 80s Italian cannibal craze. The vengeful spirits of the island had other ideas, and before long, guts were squirting behind the scenes as well, while the camera kept rolling. So I'm really excited to see how Adam Caesar's adult novel holds up to the young adult novel, and I'm sure it will be gruesome. I'm terrified of cannibals. But this one, it does look really good, very short, so thank you, Louise, for sending me it. I'm excited and scared to read it. <laughs> Huge thank you to Kate for sending me The Science of the Lambs by Thomas Harris, and this one is, I think, a sequel to an earlier book that came out. I'm not sure what it is, but it does have a story of Hannibal Lecter, and of course, the movie The Sense of the Lambs is based off of this book. And I adore The Sense of the Lambs movie. It's been years since I've seen it though, but I did really enjoy it when I first watched it. I have these ideas of doing videos where I compare a movie to a book, which is not original, but it's just something I really wanted to do. And this is one of them. This is one of the books that I wanted to read for that kind of video series, which I keep talking about and never doing. <laughs> so yeah, this follows Clary Starling, who is an FBI rookie, and she turns to Hannibal Lecter, who was held in the hospital for the criminally insane, but insight into the deadly man 
and man she must find. It was a great film, I don't know how much of it translates from the book to that film, so it'll be interesting to see the differences in it. So thank you Kate for sending me this book. The last two that were gifted to me were not on my wish list. I actually had never heard of them before. Huge thank you to Effie again. Effie spoiled me rotten. She sent me Lava Red Feather Blue by Molly Ringle. I think this is gay. It is Awakening the Handsome Prince is supposed to end the fairy tale, not begin it. But the High Valley Witches have rarely done things the way they're supposed to. On the North Pacific island of Edelonia, hidden from the world by enchantments, Prince Larkin has lain in a magical sleep since 1799 as one side of a truce between humans and fae. That is, until Merrick High Valley, a modern day witch, discovers an old box of magic charms and cryptic notes hidden inside a garden statue. Experimenting with the charms, Merrick finds himself inside the boa where Larkin lies and accidentally awakens him. Worse still, releasing Larkin from a spell also releases Ula Kana, a fairy bent on eradicating humans from the island. Sounds really good. Effie does say that it's one of their favourite male-male romances. I mean, I'm all there for anything LGBTQ+, so, I mean, never heard of this before, but thank you for sending it. SD sent me one of their recommendations too, one that I'd never heard of before, and that is Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert, and it's part of the Wicked Villains series. SD says this is one of their favourite erotic books, the second in the series, but the first one might be too much for you. The first one too much for me? For me, you have seen my Q&A video, right? This one is about Megira and Hades, which does, you know, interest me. A single night with Megira and I'm willing to do anything to save her from Hades, the man holding her captive, victim to his every whim. A bargain with the devil himself seems a small price to pay in order for Megira to go free, until I learn that she's exactly where she wants to be. She's queen to Hades' as king. And I'm the fool that walked right into their trap. The same fool who desires them both as much as I hate them. I can't resist Megira's touch or stop from being drawn to Hades' dark desires. By the time I realise just how deep a game he's playing, it may be too late for all of us. Ooh, it does sound really good. I might have to do a smutty reading vlog of it. Oh, I just saw... Ooh. Oh! Okay, I'm very interested. I'm gonna see if I can read this in August. <laughs> so there's five books left and I bought these ones and one of them is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one I had on pre-order and this one is of course from the same author as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this one is set in 1983 and there is an end of summer party and everyone is dying to catch a glimpse of the famous River siblings. By midnight the party will be completely out of control, by morning the River Mansion will have gone up in flames. So I'm just like, what happened? What's going on? And I love Taylor Jenkins' writing style. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Daisy Jones on the Six, but I loved Evelyn Hugo. So I'm hoping this one will restore my faith in read books. So yeah, I'm excited to read it still. I was supposed to read it in June, but I had no time. Another one I got was Thread Needle by Carrie Thomas. Um, one, because it was signed. Two, because of the sprayed edges. And three, because it was a pre-order. This one is in a world where I think magic is feared and our main character goes to live with her aunt and her aunt has some very bad ideas about what magic is and wants her to get rid of her magic. Our main character, she ends up meeting two girls and they show her how great magic can be. However, things don't go according to plan. That's the main gist of it that I believe is right. I was supposed to read this a few months back and never got the chance to, so hopefully now that it's out it will give me the push up the butt that I need to read it. One that I think isn't supposed to be out until mid-July but it came in early is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This is one of my most anticipated of the year because I love Grady Hendrix's books and this one follows the sole survivor of a massacre. She was the final girl and she is in the support group with other final girls. One day one of the final girls goes missing and they fear the worst. So it seems like somebody is out to finish off the final girls. I love the premise of it, love the spread edges, love Grady Hendrix's writing. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I'm reading it, I'm reading it in July, hopefully for Summerween. One that you'll probably be surprised at is I got a non-fiction book called Honesty of Glass, The Life and Loss of the RMS Titanic by Tad Fitch, J. Kent Layton and Bill Wormstead. This one is a very in-depth analysis of the Titanic, the history of it, the sinking, everything to do with the Titanic, the passengers, there's even photographs, and it's it's written in the style where there's columns. There are columns on the page. Actual columns. Like, I don't think I've read a book since university that had columns on the page. I really want to read this one. I want to try and do a video where I pick out 10 of the more shocking facts about the Titanic that people might not know about. I'd love to do a video on it because I am obsessed with the history of the Titanic. I don't know why and I'm really fascinated and also heartbroken by the tragedy of the Titanic. So I just like to learn everything I possibly can about it. Yeah, I want to give this a read probably very slowly because it is non-fiction. It's way, way, way out of my comfort zone. Hopefully I can do that video that I wanted to do. And finally, the last book, and you will have seen this already if you watch my 
Classics TBR. That is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo and this is the spring edition I believe. I've been waiting for an edition of this book to come out with readable writing. Like this is great for my eyesight to read. A lot of the classics have tiny writing and a lot of the editions of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the writing was just too small for me. So this is a great way for me to read it. I'm so excited. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Disney movie was based off of this. So I'm excited to see what the differences are about the bell ringer of Notre Dame and his adventures with Esmeralda. It's a gothic classic and I love gothic classics so much. So I'm sure this one will be fantastic. So there we have it. That was all of the books that I got in the last month and a half since the last book haul video. And again, thank you so much to every single person who sent me something for my birthday and after. I honestly do appreciate it so, so much. You guys are the absolute best. If I could hug all of you guys, I absolutely would and show my appreciation. But yes, I hope just saying thank you is enough. To all the people who sent me something and is in this video and they didn't have a gift note, please let me know it was you so I can give you a big thank you. But anyway, yes, that was the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Let me know what books you've read from this haul that you loved. I would love to know. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh.